hi welcome to a quick uh episode of crime fish body doesn't we're coming to you from new zealand from the landscaping beds near the freeways uh, they also got plenty of these uh, just around the uh, different suburbs and towns here where two different species uh, that are vastly different in chemical composition uh, seem to be thriving in these uh, wood chip beds so you can see formium 10x right here the native plant they use uh, in landscaping also got the cordyline australis a yucca look-alike and you've just got ample wood chips on the ground so endless food source so we're going to take a look at two of the uh two different species that uh, tend to pop up in these landscaping beds uh so no one out there uh ends up mistaking one for the other and possibly dying here we go so this is kind of spooky this is gallerina marginata a deadly psilocybe look-alike if you don't know what to look for growing uh, right next to Psilocybe subruginosa on the right. You can see Psilocybe subruginosa doesn't have that distinctive uh, annulus that you can see the Gallerina has. The uh, Looking at the underside of the cap, the uh, caps, the uh, gills look much different. You can also see that distinctive bluing on the uh, stipe right there as well as uh, stipe texture. But uh, they otherwise, they, they really do look alike if you're looking at them from the top. Or they can look alike. There's subtle differences in cap texture especially if gallerina has been sprayed with the herbicide they use in these landscaping beds sometimes you might have that semi-blue kind of like a green turquoise staining but uh gallerina marginata is of course deadly and uh psilocybe subruginosa is uh, psychoactive and generally harmless but it's more just than looking at pictures and comparing them you have to actually know the differences in morphology spore color etc and, and even just know that they grow together and there are dangerous lookalikes out there you could see with all this formium and just the endless bed of landscaping that they got down here they've really created a wonderful habitat uh, for wood loving fungi psychoactive harmless or deadly uh, to thrive it's just endless probably these chips are, i assume are radiata pine which is invasive here but uh it's just hilarious to me because there's ample psilocybe too Ample psilocybe, lots of gallerina, marginata, etc. See, there's some nice, some nice uh, psilocin polymerization. Very indicative. But again, check for no annulus and look at the gills, look at the spores. It's incredible. They're just thriving here. And it's our old friend Aceroi rubra, of course, too. Getting in on the action, decomposing all the cellulose and lignin and whatnot. But it's looking a little rough, right? Because it's uh, getting blasted with the sun, so it's a little dried out. I can't even smell it from here. Normally, you could smell the feces smell and roadkill smell from, you know, six feet away. There you go. There's a nice rotten freshie. See that? Just opening up. What a damn alien. What a strange fungus. And look, it's, it looks like someone smeared shit on the lobes of this that uh, fruit and body. That's where the spores are, I guess. Just trying to get insects to uh, fly into it, get all curious, look into its uh, butthole-like mushroom, and then fly off with the spores. See, look at that. Gallerina marginata. Can't quite see the annulus on it, but notice how it's not bluing. Get the different, uh, slightly different coloration and stipend gills. Growing right next to Psilocybe subruginosa. Different gill color, texture no annulus and a uh, visible bluing down there at the base of that uh that stipe gotta be careful gotta know your shit if you're gonna if you're gonna do that you know see there's a gallerina marginata with the hint of an annulus see that that other one didn't have it either way growing right next to the subs this is hilarious yeah look at this just these little privacy domes in here of course if this was california it'd just be an endless homeless camp but Right now, it's a breeding ground for psilocybe and other mushrooms too, other wood lovers. Okay, you get a larger population, you get more banging, i.e. more genetic recombination, more karyogamy, more meiosis. You get the, uh, you're basically breeding possibly new phenotypes of psilocybe that can then be selected for, either by environment or by people. But look at this. I mean, you've got this wonderful little no direct sun in the shade of the formium and tons of food and tons of moisture even though the rest of the environment's starting to dry out uh, a few days after the rain but you see how bad the weeds get when it when i haven't laid down mulch in a while see that so that's the whole reason you lay down mulch because it keeps the weeds down and then as the fungi break it down it releases nutrients into the soil it's how you help build soil 
So there you go, the subconscious art of uh, psilocybe mushroom breeding that the suburbs are unknowingly going about. And I hope uh, they keep doing it. Remember, you need that wood to break down. It's how you get nutrients back into the soil. Pretty hilarious though, you got an endless supply of food right there. Endless supply of food, larger population, more karyogamy, more meiosis, more uh, genetic recombination, new phenotypes for all the wood lovers. And of course, uh, remember, that's, uh, that's, how you, uh, that's how you end up building soil. So it's a, it's a good thing, generally speaking, not to mention the uh, numerous medicinal effects, como se dice, of the molecule psilocybin, which is basically harmless. Uh, so that said, uh, hopefully you got some out of that. Have a great day. Go fuck yourself. Bye.